Well, let's talk about the report you you published at the IPA last week. It uh, you know yeah. not not uh, moving on from Dan Andrews too far. It paints a pretty grim picture of the economic uh, circumstances in Victoria. What are the main findings? You're right. It's fr fr grim, Fred, and it's grim even for you know economic economic doomsday preppers like myself. Uh, it, the fact of the matter is, Victoria has the worst economy on a range of vital indicators than any other state in Australia. The highest level of taxation, the highest level of debt, the highest level of government spending, the fastest growing state uh, uh, state government expenditure, and the fastest growing uh, public sector workforce as well. Uh, what that brings us to is peril perilously close to the last time Victoria had such a fiscal disaster, which was the late 80s and early 90s, when the Labor administrations of John Kane and Joan Kerner sent Victoria spiralling into a, a cascading series of financial disasters, up to and including uh, the uh, collapse of the State Bank of Victoria. Uh, now, according to the indicators, uh, as written up by, in the report by my colleagues Dan Wilde and Kevin Yao last week, uh, we are in a way worse position than we were even back then. Uh, so... Uh, we, we, it remains to be seen the exact fallout from these economic indicators. I think they'll lag a bit and we might not see the true pain bite until 2023. Uh, but Victorians who, the increasingly diminishing number of us who've lived through, and I don't count myself as one of those either, although I'm a keen historian of it or student of the history of it, uh, the fact of the matter is Victorians who remember those days should be very, very, very worried because they're coming again and they might get here faster than we think. All those, all those economic indicators, though, Giddy, and they said, I mean, to a socialist, that's a socialist paradise, isn't it? <laughs> Yep, the, the road to socialist hill is paved with the noble intentions of modern monetary theory and the, <laughs> and the belief uh, in the power of government to fix any and all of the world's problems. Again, we will wait and see. We've been here before. But, you know, Fred, that doesn't stop uh, the left getting into government as soon as the debt is repaid, as Jeff Kennett did uh, very, very strongly in the 90s. That's the part of Victorian history I did live through. Uh, I, I came of age politically during that time. I remember those times of dynamism, of Jeff Kennett building things, of state finances getting back under control. But again, people have short memories and uh, I suppose they like all the free stuff. So, uh, But, you know, there's no such thing as a free lunch and the piper will have to be paid eventually. Exactly. Now, tell us about the suburban rail loop. This, this is, according to your report, this is the one, this is the project that will tip Victoria almost into bankruptcy, uh, unable to service the debt. Is that right? What, what does the suburban rail loop do and how... Um, how perilous is it as a project? Well, to understand the suburban rail loop, you have to understand the modus operandi of Dan. Uh, you know, he's had, I guess, three planks in his public persona. One was keeping us safe during COVID. Uh, that doesn't rate as well as it perhaps used to for obvious reasons. The other one, as I just explained, is wheeling out the woke uh, things like the new Pride Centre in Melbourne and all sorts of other things. But the third thing is he likes to build things. He likes to be on the six o'clock news in his high vis with his hard hat on showing proactivity, which I suppose you can understand the political strategy of because he won office largely off the back of the fact that the uh, value nap fund government was completely useless and didn't do almost anything other than put PSOs on train stations. So you can understand the political motivation. But to answer your question, the, the suburban rail loop is, as the name suggests, a rail loop stretching around the outer suburbs, uh, sort of snaking its way from uh, places like uh, Clayton in the southeast over to Werribee in the west. Uh, the problem is, of course, that uh, the stages one and two alone of this gargantuan rail loop will cost Victorians $200 billion. And as I just explained, the state is flat, cold, broke right now. We cannot afford it. 